Hello and welcome to the air-conditioned splendour of a Bentley Spur in Frankfurt. It's the Motor Show. Many of my colleagues wince at this place because it's so big and there's so much walking to do, but it's kind of unmissable this time around. There's some great metal. We're going to go and have a look around. As you can probably tell I'm using one of these handheld gimbal-y things because Neil's at home working hard. So you'll have to um, bear with me, but you'll get a good look at the latest metal. First up, Porsche and its Mission E concept. 600 horsepower, a range of over 300 miles, and starting to make Tesla pap itself. It looks ace in the flesh too. The Turbo Carrera was there too, but it looks little different apart from some styling tweaks, a new wheel, and sat-nav gubbins. I wonder how it sounds. The Bentley Bentayga is both huge and brash. The attention to detail is staggering and the order books are already full for a year. It also has an excellent picnic hamper. Over at VW, I couldn't stop looking at the Golf R Estate. I know it's not that new. Or this. Um, for reasons that I hope you'll understand, I need this setup. It's a Panigale R in the back of a VW Transporter called a Panamericana. This might be the coolest wheeled object ever. I kept a safe distance filming the new Huracan Spider, but the boss was too busy having his nails done to come and punch me. I have to say, it looks ace, but then all Lambos do. I wonder if it understeers. The F-Pace is everything we'd expected from Jaguar. Great proportions, but am I alone in thinking the cabin looks almost too bare? They'll sell every single one they can build. Would you prefer your 488 to have no roof? Well, Ferrari can now oblige and do you one of these spider versions. But there's only so much static metal I can handle, so here's a drive in the new A45 AMG. 380 horsepower. That's a huge figure. When I was younger, it belonged to the very fastest supercars on the planet. Say it again in your head. 380, that's 20 back from the magic 400. But these days, 380 horsepower belongs to a hatchback. Um, it seems quite strange to be driving a revised A45 AMG because in my mind it's still a very new car. Anyhow, um, what was when it was launched one of the more extraordinary four-cylinder powertrains that I'd ever driven, or anyone had ever driven, um, has now been revised because the world has kind of caught up, hasn't it? The industry story is that the really clever chap that designed and um, produced this engine was soon after it was uh, finished, poached by someone else, and he went, we think, to VW. And there, he did the Golf R engine, which is on a stunning force in the powertrain as well. And so, as ever, in this industry, stuff moves so quickly. The Golf R came along, and suddenly the A45 wasn't the absolute Mac Daddy. So they've responded. They've responded with, wait for it, more power, hence the 380 horsepower. 380 horsepower? Wow. Um, and they've also changed the gearing, because they reckon that the intermediates were a bit long. So they've stacked the gears a little bit closer, so it does feel punchier. I mean, does it feel miles more powerful in isolation? No, it doesn't. I think if you back to back them, it would. And the gear ratios in combination with that really make a difference. Um, let's go and sort of flash it around the lousiest ring for a couple of laps to see what it's like, shall we? Okay. Ovals are funny things, aren't they? You sort of have to dip down here, hit the kerb on the inside, and roll it round to the outside. I'm now in the raciest of the many engine modes. I think there are four. Um, and gear shift as fast as possible, it's really, really fast gear shift. Brakes are good, good strong pedal, braking down, just going to try and meet that apex, did I manage that just about? Over these curves, I've got this switchback. It's a Haldex four-wheel drive system, fundamentally the car does have understeer. Okay, I hate to disappoint you, I'm on a Dunlop Sport Max as well. Um, so it's, it is an understeery thing, but you can neutralise it. Allow me to demonstrate in a second. So. Obviously, traction, you don't even think about it, you just smash the pedal. I have none of the systems on at the moment, so I'm in fourth gear and I do this. 
then we get quite a lot of oversteer. <laughs> In fact, we can do it here as well. So it is a little bit adjustable, which I like. You have to be quite aggressive with it. Um, it's mighty, mighty fast. Does it feel like a sort of Nissan GTR four-wheel drive system? No, it doesn't. It's the old Haldex, but it's kind of the only solution for a transverse engine front-wheel drive car. It's a good little circuit, this, you know. It's a good little circuit. Steering, really pleasant. I like the weight, I like the speed of it, too. Oh, what does it do here? Oh, yeah, it does that there. Wow. Um, yeah, it's a monster little package. Of course, a dry racetrack is not its favourite place. Where we need to really exploit this car is, of course, a sort of damp B road in the UK, where I suspect it would leave most things for dead. Does it do enough to stay ahead of the much cheaper Golf R? I'd want to drive them back to back, but it's quite a step on. It's quite a bit quicker, I will say. What about this Focus RS at 28 grand? I think that's going to shake things up a bit. I really do. What's that? Fourth gear, we bung it in here. Oh, I do like doing that. And then we're through here. A bit of a bung there. <laughs> um, it's not a cheap car, the A45, but, but as a compact, fairly discreet, very fast machine, I can see why it's so popular. I really can. <laughs> That's just naughty. That's just naughty. That's plain naughty. Now, the one thing that I cannot demonstrate to you here, I'll back off for a second, that is so important about this car, I think, for the UK customer, is there's a button down here, and it's a damper button. At the moment, I'm in the firm dampers, which I feel is a close approximation to the stiffness of the older car. If you press the button, you can soften and slacken the dampers. And then, I've been out on the road earlier, you have a much, much more supple machine. And that was, for me, the last car's downfall. It was just so stiff and busy on the road. This is much, much nicer. In fact, as buttons go, this provides one of the bigger differences that I've come across. Um, so a big change there and a good change. Anyhow, wasn't it nice to see something moving and sliding around in amongst all that static stuff at the motor show? A45, it's a bit of an animal. On the road, when it's damp, hard to see how you could find something an awful lot quicker. Compact, immensely fast, secure, and if you've got space, you can throw it around and it'll do all those angle things as well. It's a proper AMG. And now back to the show. The Ford Focus RS is going to cause mayhem in the hot hatch market. 350 horsepower and just over 28 grand. They'll be fighting on the forecourts. Still think the first gen car is the best looking of the lot though. The best concept of all was this Honda Project 2 and 4. It uses an RC123V Moto GP engine and weighs 405 kilograms. It's perfectly bonkers and straddles that fast bike, fast car space like nothing else. Hello, now I need you to have a look at the size of this BMW stand. So I'm going to walk you through it because it's amazing. Watch this, okay? That's lots of minis. And over here, there are lots of Rolls Royces. So, oh, there's all the eye stuff. Eye. Here's all the good stuff, the M cars. So, M3, white with brown leather, maybe not. M5, M6. Oh look, there's another whole atrium full of seven series. Um, and then back through here is the new GT3 car. Pretty damn cool itself. So. 
Um, I think you'll agree that's quite a lot of motor show stand. I was told to go and look at the Nissan Grips, but it's another massive crossover thing that doesn't really interest me. So I wobbled along to the Alpina stand and dribbled over this old B7S Turbo. It really is perfection. And these pictures accurately show how difficult it is to get anywhere near the new Alfa Giulia. This QV version does 190 miles an hour, 0 to 60 in under 4 seconds, and they say it'll lap the ring in 7 minutes 39 seconds. Wow! So that was my walk around Frankfurt holding a small camera. Thank you for watching.